the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Our merciful Lord Jesus, who brought us to this world, a world filled with fear, with turbulences, with difficulties, and many other things that make human beings, especially you children, sometimes fear things happening in this world. Lord, today we are asking you to fill up our heart, our hearts more within your love, encouragement, things that to support us to face this world bravely. And this way we can focus on you to the end of the days in the name, in your name I'm asking Lord, amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God, amen. <clears throat> My beloved, again today, our Holy Family Gathering title is I Am He, or some other translations, you know, it says it's I, but I don't know, for some reason I would like to use I Am He, do not be afraid. Dear married couples, how much the world needs to hear, I am he, do not be afraid. Because according to what's happening today in the world or around the world in general, tell me who doesn't have fear of I am or am I going to find anytime soon job or not? Or <clears throat> am I going to have good business year? Or am I going to have coronavirus or not? Or do I have enough faith to raise good children? And of course, many other things in life, many other life, you know, fearing it challenges. There is a lot of things going on in the world. So how can I get rid of my fear? Definitely through the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ that says, I am he, do not be afraid. So now let's move on <clears throat> to when did he say that? Do not be afraid. Let's get to that day. And actually, we can go all of us, you know, to that spot where the Lord Jesus is with his 12 disciples and a huge, big crowd in a huge, you know, nice green field. All of us going there? Ready? All right, let's go. So the day he said, do not be afraid, it was the same day the Lord Jesus performed <clears throat> the five loaves and two fish miracle. And that day, he fed 5,000 men beside women and children. So easily we are talking about maybe 50 to 20,000 20, of people. All of them 
a and God filled. So a tremendous miracle, tremendous miracle his disciples never seen before, never. So we can imagine, you know, how busy and hectic day was, you know, for the disciples. So I'm assuming, or all of us, you know, let's say if we are, or, or if we were, you know, there, we may hear, you know, we were expecting the Lord to say, maybe why don't you take, you know, one day off and get rested or a couple of days, you know, over the weekend. No, the Lord Jesus, what he did for a good reason, for a reason, actually, he made them. And some other translation says he forced them to get on a boat and to go to the other side of Bethsaida. So where he can uh, dismiss, you know, the crowd and the Lord Jesus can go to the mountain to pray. Go to the mountain to pray. So around evening time, what happened around evening time? The boat was in the middle of the sea. <clears throat> and according to St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 48, he says, The Lord was, or the Lord saw, saw them, you know, suffering. Why? What happened suddenly? The weather changed and the wind, the great wind, was against them. Again, about the fourth watch, the, the Bible says, of the night. So the fourth watch always, it's the, because the day is four quarters. So when he say that, you know, that means it's around between six and 12 o'clock, the last few hours of the day. So I'm assuming around six o'clock, he told them, you know, to get on the boat and go to the other side. And then he saw them suffering. So I'm assuming between that time, the time you know they left, and the time the Lord Jesus went to them, was that is two or two three hours. So it was dark, and very we windy weather. So they were already suffering from the weather. And what happened later on, when he got there, it was almost like I said, between eight and nine o'clock, everybody thought it's a ghost. He came walking on the water. So they're already afraid of what's happening around them. You know, they thought, you know, they are going to die. And all of the sun seeing a ghost walking on the water. So just like almost every one of us, you know, when things happen like that, we get really scared. Uh, then due to that time, it says, you know, immediately the Lord Jesus came walking on the water saying to them, I am he, do not be afraid. And as soon as, you know, he said that, he walked into the boat, and guess what? What happened? The wind stopped. And this is what the scripture says. They were greatly amazed. Greatly amazed. So this is long story short. And now, my beloved, let's get to the few points of the story. Are you ready? Okay, let me see if I can see some of you. Yes, we are ready. <laughs> okay.
All right. <clears throat> now the first point, let's call it a boat rowing against the wind. My beloved, our short lifetime on earth is very similar to the boat journey, to the boat's journey. In other words, like I said, you know, the word forced them to get on a boat. So likewise, you and I, for example, we came to this world and we had no choice to come to this life. Did anybody ask you? Of course not, me either. Don't, don't worry about it, don't, don't be sad. So we came to this world, my beloved, and uh, sometimes we may get to a dark spot. And all of a sudden, you know, that our life change, our life, you know, whether it change and get very windy and the wind, you know, blow against us. It made that happen. Okay, but should be no problem and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. As long as as, as long as you keep your, your faith and as long as as you keep rowing against the wind, or actually I should say uh, rowing against the wind moving forward and fighting against the wind. Fighting against the wind. So keep doing that and while you are full of hope, keep doing that. But again, do not lose hope that he is watching and he is coming to stop the wind no matter what. Number one, to stop the wind, mute the sea and fill your heart with divine peace. And at the end, definitely, he will solve your problem. Doesn't matter what it is, how big it is, he will stop. But we need to have that kind of faith. Row against the wind, against everything comes, thoughts, anything. The Lord wants us to have that kind of faith. But unfortunately, sometimes we act like the rest of the world and say, why me, Lord? Is it fair? Unfortunately, most of us look at it from that perspective, and that's what grieves our Lord. This is, reminds me with one of the monks, very faithful monk, one of the desert, you know, monk. And one day, the Lord allowed, you know, to Satan to come here to his, you know, cell. And he was beating up, you know, the, the, the monk. And all, he was almost going to die. So then, you know, Satan left. And the monk, he was crying. He's saying, Lord, where were you when that happened? The Lord answered him immediately. He said, I was here before Satan come, but you never called me. That's what we need to do. And this is actually, oh, this, this is, you know, what, let's get one, you know, out of the first point. God wants his children strong. Rowing against the wind, God wants his children strong. Let's get to the Second uh, point and call it watching over his lovers. This is a good one. And we are his lovers, right? Yes, of course. Again, let's get to the moment the Lord, he command or forced his disciples to 
get on the boat. So you remember what he did? Immediately he went to the mountain to pray. That's what it says. So as you know, the mountain presents a high place. We call it today watchtower, where he can watch over his disciples. And that's what he did. Again, at this point, the mountain is a symbol of the Lord Jesus' throne that dwells in the highest heaven. This way again, where he can watch over the entire world, especially his lovers, you and I, yes, his lovers, and day and night. As it is, you know, mentioned in Psalm 121. Can someone read it, please? So, Marianne, this is where we ask you to read. You there, Marianne? Okay. Do you want me to Go ahead, sure. yep. uh, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Thank you. Shall not. Okay, now before I get to the point, he says, who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Okay, now I need, to, before I get to this, you know, point, I, let me explain something. The, the word of Israel in the Bible <clears throat> now, especially in the New Testament, Israel, who is Israel? Israel is Jacob, one of the three great fathers. And the day he wants to go back to his brother, and he was by himself, and the Lord came to him in form of a human being, and wrestled with Jacob. And he did that almost till morning before, you know, the sunrise. The Lord said to Jacob, I have to leave. He said, no, unless you bless me. So he captured the Lord. He captured the Lord. So then the Lord, he blessed him. And since that time, he said, your name, it's not a Jacob, it'll be Israel. Why? Because he captured the Lord, right? So now in the New Testament, who's capturing the Lord? The church, his children, where? In our hearts, we capture the Lord inside our hearts. Great. This is a good point, right? Okay, now let's get to the, uh, <clears throat> to that verse. So he says, he who uh, keeps Israel, he's a church, shall neither slumber nor sleep. Our Lord never sleeps. Keep watching, knowing every bit of our life, every bit. Even if through sometimes we may, you know, turn our face on him, or we may neglect him, or we may turn him down, but he never does. He never does. Instead, he keeps watching and praying to us as he did to his loved disciples. So my beloved, this is the second point, and what are we getting out of this again? Always watching over his children. We need to know that and keep it in our mind. And that's how our Lord is. And now another excitement, you know, point. Let's call it fear, disturbance, 
and panic in the ocean. He saw them, like I said in the story, he saw them suffering enough. So if any of us suffer enough, my beloved, enough doesn't mean, you know, over of what we can, you know, carry. Always according, he will allow, you know, according to our ability. So if any of, any of us, you know, suffer enough, definitely he will come and save us. He will save us. And <clears throat> he will do that or he will allow that to happen in way to recognize him, to recognize him well. Because many people, they come to the church. Maybe some people serve the church, okay, but still they do not recognize him. So again, one more thing, when you see the word of the sea in the Bible or the ocean, again, that's you know, a symbol of the world distur disturbances, because always you know, the ocean or the sea you know, is moving, waving, or sometimes could be a huge waves. That's the turbulences or disturbances. So when you see that word in the Bible, you need to know that is a symbol to, the, to our world. So this is a great lesson to all of us that he will never give up on us, never. Never he did, you know, to his disciples and never he will, never he will give up, you know, on his children. And let me give you a true story. This has happened, you know, to me, to my family. We were almost five families on a cruise. This is a while ago. And we are in the middle of the sea. You can see nothing but water. I was, you know, and all of a sudden we were in the rooms and they are speaking, you know, on a on loudspeaker saying, everybody, let's go to the dock all the way, you know, up to the roof. And we smelled, you know, we, we, we felt, you know, there is a smoke and there is a fire. So everybody rushed, you know, to go to the top floor. And uh, at that time, uh, Titanic movie released, you know, recently. So everybody knows, you know, what's, what happened to Titanic, you know, that huge, you know, uh, ship. So we went all the way to the top. Was it sunny day? No. Was daytime? No. Was, again, the sun was out? No, it was raining. So, but believe me, when you are with the world, I mean, I'm sorry, with the Lord, he will support you and he won't let you know fear come over you. He will give you encouragement. He will give you support. He will give you comfort. And believe it or not, I still remember some of the other people they, throw, they were throwing up because they were scared. Why? Because the Lord is not here. So again, let's keep in the same, you know, let's uh, stay in the, with the same scene. Like I said, fear, distur disturbance, panic in the ocean. So in the meantime, if anyone suffers out of, of let's say poverty, okay, or physical illness, marriage problems, or the worst suffering, it has to come to an end. It must come to an end. Like I said, you know, before, even if he comes or show up, you know, the last hour, we think he is very late and look at what's happening to us. But I want you to learn something. Whenever you get into that, you know, a crisis, okay, or difficulty, the time it's his. The always the time it says, don't say when, Lord, rush me, Lord. No. 
It's always his. And let me tell you why, or let me explain why. During the difficult time, <clears throat> Jesus' attention to you is to strengthen and increase your faith, increase your prayers, your hope, and of course, even your patience. And this is what the Lord's always looking for. He wants his children to have all that. And this is the purpose of the difficult time or, or, or a temptation or anything else. While you are in that crisis and out of nowhere, <clears throat> you will see the Lord Jesus or the Lord of Lords walking on the pride of the world, okay, coming to you. Yes, a special visit to you saying, son or daughter, I am he. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And we need to have all those, or to keep that voice of our Lord in, in our minds, in our hearts. And we have one great, you know, example for that, one of our saints, the great Saint Ignatius, the first, one of our patriarchs, when they came, you know, to our country and dragged him all the way to Rome, on the way, few times, some of his children, they were, you know, coming to see him, to take the blessing, and at the same time, asking him, let us, you know, help you get you out of this. He had no fear whatsoever. He said, do not force me to do something I don't like. I would love to go and die in the name of my Lord Jesus. But you are going to, to the Romans back then. They were the, the mightiest you know, country. And throw the Christian people to lions. So what? I have what I have inside my heart, which is the Lord Jesus. He's greater than fear or lions or anything else on the face of earth. And actually he went all the way down there and they throw him to the lions. <clears throat> so my beloved, again, let's get out of the third point. He is coming even at the last hour. Don't give up. Don't, don't say he's not coming or he doesn't hear me. He doesn't know about my problem. Yes, he does. But he is coming. But leave the time up to him. He is coming even at the last hour. Okay, let me get to the last point, which is the purpose of the wind event. Can someone read, please, St. Mark, chapter 6, verse 52. Okay, Marianne, you're up. Okay. For they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. Thank you, Marianne. God bless you. Okay, the purpose of the wind event. Let's now get to the point, please pay attention, because this is actually we, what we need to come out, you know, with. The purpose of that, what the Lord Jesus did, and he asked him immediately to go on the boat to rebuke and blame the hardened heart of his disciples. Again, because this is really good to each one of us to rebuke and blame the hardened heart of his disciples. Without a single word, without a single word. So the one event itself explains what happened, you know, that night explains that he's saying, you know, the Lord Jesus, today you have seen my great five loaves and two fish miracle. 
fed over 15,000 people, which means a miracle never seen before, never mentioned in the Bible. And you didn't get amazed the way you are now when he showed himself walking on the sea. Because you haven't recognized him or recognized me yet, I am he. So about as soon as he came walking on the water, saying to them, I am he. I am he, like I said, I like, I like to, to, you know, uh, mention this. Because he said it to Moses before, I am he. And St. Paul made it more clear to us, <clears throat> excuse me, where he says, you know, God was manifest in the flesh. Or in other words, I am God in flesh. So as soon as he said that, my beloved, the hardened hearts were open. And that's why they got greatly amazed. That's why St. Mark, he says, they were greatly amazed. So this is my beloved, this is the purpose of the wind event. Because sometimes many things may have it happen, you know, around us but we still don't recognize him. We need to recognize him in our life, especially through repentance. My beloved married couples again, do you need a similar event in your life to know him? Of course not. If you haven't, if you haven't yet, but please do yourself a favor. Then have a prayer room, special prayer room, and make the Lord Jesus your guest every day. And be generous to him and offer him. Not coffee or tea. Definitely not. And offer him sacrifice of a prayer, sacrifice of a broken heart, tears, and especially love. Yes, especially sacrifice of love. That's what satisfies the Lord. And what makes you love the church, if you do that, this is what makes you love the church and be not a church member anymore, rather a church person, a church lover. And what makes you worthy for the Holy Communion? Yes, the Holy Communion, his body, his own body and the blood that you need the most today. At least for two reasons. At least for two reasons. Number one, again, to abide the Lord Jesus, to abide in you and you in him. The only way, the only way that can, you can, you know, increase his love and decrease fear inside your heart. I will say it again because this is important. You, reason number one, you, you need to, you know, to abide, the Lord Jesus abide in you and you in him. That's the only reason can, uh, or you can, you know, increase his love and decrease fear inside your heart. And second reason, his body and blood, they are the gracious deposit. They are our gracious deposit for eternal life. Amen. God bless. Amen. Todi Abuna. That was wonderful. Okay, so we're going to open it to questions now. If anybody has any questions, please send them through the chat or go ahead and unmute yourself and feel free to please ask. Uh, 
Um, while we wait for that, Abuna, we had two questions come in. Um, I think you received them too um, in the text messages. Hmm. Do you want me to read them for you, Abuna? Yes, please. This way. Give me a second. I'm in here. Okay. Okay, so the first question, um, it came in during the week. So it might not be on topic, but the first question is, why don't Protestant Christians do the sign of the cross? That's the first question. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, thank God, you know, we are a traditional a church. And when I say traditional doesn't mean just because we have a traditions or we have received, let's call it the sign of the cross from, you know, the first century. But when I say traditional, that means the church who takes the whole Bible, not take a verses, or part of it, no, the whole Bible, the whole Bible. And it's mentioned in the Old Testament differently because the way God asked Moses to offer, you know, the lamb every year annually, he asked him, you know, how to get the uh, screws, you know, and, and get it inside, you know, the, the lamp, like in the cross, it's almost, you know, cross way. That was a sign of the cross. Anytime in the Old Testament, you know, they go to fight another nation, one of the prophets must be there while they are fighting each other. The prophet will do this. As long as, you know, he keeps his hands up, this is the yeah. same course, right? As long as the hands are up, they will conquer over the enemies. So as long as, so the, the, you know, the war going on and on for hours and hours. So his hands getting tired, going down. So as soon as, you know, the hands going down, they were losing people. People died from the army. So they come up with two men to lift up just the hand and keep the shape of the, like the shape of the cross. This is in the Old Testament and many other things. Now in the New Testament, if we go to Romans 21, chapter eight, can you read Fairuz or Sarah? Romans 21, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter one, verse 18. Chris, are you going to bring it up? Okay, there it is. Okay, Feruz, go ahead. Feruz, unmute yourself. Uh, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You see, it's in the Bible. And it's very clear and very powerful and very bold, you know, a sentence or, or verse. For the message of the cross is foolishness. Mm. to those who are perishing not the Christian should be for the perishing people people going to hell but for us as a Christian but to us who are being saved which means you know the Christian it is the power of God the power of God and that's why they kept using the cross, everything inside the church out and everything we do. And cause that's how we can 
apparently, you know, the cross itself, you know, became a life to us. It's just the way, you know, the Lord said it, who wants to follow me should deny himself and carry his cross. This is something to be proud of. This is our life. The cross is our life now. It's not just a symbol. So those, now I'm talking about our saints. This is the beautiful things about, you know, our church who carried the cross heavier and heavier and heavier cross, they became saints. And by the sign of the cross only, without sometimes without saying a single word, they can cast out demons, they can heal, uh, they can heal, uh, you know, sick people, and they can uh, perform, you know, different miracles, and on and on. You want to hear more than that? One of the saints, one day, you know, he was, he was, he, he, he finished, you know, the Holy Mass and he was so tired and sleeping on a chair, right? Because he's a saint, like I said, his life became a heavy cross. So one of the families, you know, they, they went to visit him. One, a member, you know, of the family had demons. Like I said, the patriarch was sleeping. And all of a sudden, you know, that person was screaming. He didn't pray. He didn't make sign of the cross. He didn't do nothing. But as soon, you know, the demons, you know, that person saw the scene, they were terrified and screaming. And uh, of course, many other things. Uh, this is one of the uh, verses. Even also, if we go to St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. Dr. Hasna, can you read, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, sure, you know. Is it in the chat? Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I'm on my cell phone. Uh, one second. Um, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth Will, mount, will mourn, I'm sorry, will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Thank you, Cody. Uh, you see, <clears throat> if you pay attention to the first half of the verse, he says, then the, so the sign of the Son of Man, it became a sign of our Lord Jesus. So when he come, this is the second coming. When he come, what would happen before, you know, everybody see him? The sign, the sign of the Son of Man. What, what is the sign of the Son of Man? The cross will show up and everybody will see that sign of the cross. And many other verses, same thing, you know, like I said, many other verses. So uh, that's why our church, you know, uh, we are very proud of the cross. We are honoring the cross and because it's the power of God and source of a great blessing. And this is, like I said, a great lesson to us to, 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 um, Think that our life, the whole and our entire life, it's a cross. It's a cross. If we uh, deny ourselves and carry our cross, then we will be worthy to follow the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abuna. Abuna, we still had one question um, in the text messages, and then we had a request also on your thoughts about joy. So I don't know which one you want to address first. About joy? 
They just said, can we hear your thoughts about joy? About joy. <clears throat> uh, joy is a big word, to be honest. That was my question. <laughs> I, I, I was talking to someone like dear to me today. So, um, and I think it is related to our topic today because I think if we're not afraid and no matter, like that's my thought. I was talking with this um, person, like if we in difficult situation, any challenge and we have joy, you know, of course it's not easy. But if we have joy through the Holy Spirit, you know, through God, then we shouldn't be afraid and trust in him. So that's why, I, like, so he was questioning me, like, why you saying it's a joy? So that's why I want to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, <clears throat> believe me, uh, we can't find a joy more or better then we get into, you know, difficult time. Uh, <clears throat> when we are, you know, having no problems, no, nothing bothering us, you know, we may get comfortable. That's something, okay? And may, a lot of people, you know, they would like that, but who experienced life, you know, with the Lord and who wants to, uh, when he put the Lord, like I said the other day in one of, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, programs, uh, like I said, if, if the Lord Jesus, he is our gracious, you know, diamond in our life. That's it. Nothing else, you know, brings me <clears throat> happiness as much as, as, you know, the Lord Jesus. Uh, because <clears throat> that joy, it's beyond, you know, of, of what we're getting from, from the world. The world, you know, yeah, I may get happy. Anything, even, you know, during, you know, happiness, let's say someone, okay, uh, celebrating his birthday or her birthday or anniversary or any other occasion, okay? They invite a lot of people. They're supposed to be a party, happy time, or drinking food, you know, time. And all of a sudden, if something happened to that person who invite, you know, everybody, it will turn upside down. Am I right? So where is happiness? What happened to happiness? It's not there. But when we say joy, while you are due to, you know, difficult time, and every, like, you know, you, you know, that there's a lot of few problems, you know, around and you still have that peace from the Lord and also joy. Why? Because you sharing the Lord Jesus across. So when that comes again, Doctora, this is very important. When it comes to you from the Lord directly, that's it. You can't explain anything about that joy and you don't know. Why, you know, is it there or how to describe it? You feel it only because you live that moment, that difficult moment, or, or you are in the middle of crisis. That's why you, only you, you can feel it, but sometimes, unfortunately, we can't describe it. Good enough? Yeah, totally, totally. Sorry. I was, I was just trying to make the other person try to feel that joy. That's why I was trying to see, like, I guess how like, can. I, like I said, he can't, like he can't feel. It. He can't to that point unless, like I said, he allowed or, or, or you know, um, accept uh, what the Lord, you know, send him as, a, let's say, temptation or a yeah. few crisis here and there, you know. Yeah. I'm going to get into that and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're allowing to, to happen to me, okay. to share your cross. Yeah. And, you know, he can experience that joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any comments, by the, by the way? No? Do you want to take the last question, Abuna? It's about fasting. 
about fasting what about fasting nobody wants to fast <laughs> some people say why do we fast on wednesday and friday mm -hmm. um and then the second part like why are the specifications like there like who who told us how to fast basically the bible again everything's in the bible mm -hmm. Okay, it's in the Bible in the Old Testament. You remember when the Lord Jesus, you know, it's in the Bible, of course, and the Lord Jesus mentioned it when he gave one of the parables, he said, one of the Pharisees and the tax collector went to the temple, right? So the Pharisees, he said, thank you, God, because I'm fasting two days a week, right? So it was there. It's not a something new. They might tell you, okay, well, this is in the Old Testament. What do we have, you know, now everything new. We don't need to fast. It's not mentioned in the New Testament. But remember what the Lord said. I came not to... Uh, uh, Not to criticize, but to fulfill, to fulfill, to make it more perfect. Not to fulfill the law, no, not the law. We're not in the law days anymore. To fulfill, which means, you know, to, to come into the much better days, days filled with his grace. So if they already, you know, so I, I won't go to that point. I won't go that far. <clears throat> so it's there. So again, we need to know that there is a book. Okay, not it's not everything's not here in the Bible. This is book of salvation. It doesn't describe, you know, many other things. Many other things. Many other things, you know, even the churches, you know doing it but it's not you know described you know in, in the bible and it's there and like i said the bible and like as you know according to saint john it's a book enough to be or to to bring you to to salvation to be saved uh Again, the other all information, there is a lot of information about, you know, marriage, about, you know, uh, uh, about how to ordain bishops and, and deacons and priests and so on, on and on and on. The disciples, disciples wrote that book. And thank God we have it in the church. All this, the, 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 traditional you know churches that's why we have law you know or canon you know to all these you know uh matters and that's why you see it, it's a very organized church and each one of them you know or the you know or an apostolic church they have their own patriarch or pope and uh, it's a very, very organized church. Uh, so everything that's mentioned there, it's there. That's number one. So they were fasting, you know, different days, but now became Wednesday and Friday. Why Wednesday and Friday? Wednesday, because the day, you know, Judas went to the a priest, the chief, and the Pharisees, and they had a meeting, and he, they decided how to... Uh, capture, you know, the Lord or, or, you know, to, to bring him into judgment to the court. So that's number one, you know, that was Wednesday and Friday, of course, the day of crucifixion. That's why we change the days, still two days a week, but different days. Now, if you think about why we, why we are fasting on some other churches, they don't. If we go back to the beginning, 
what made Adam and Eve sin? Because they refused to fast. And you see how bring or how big, you know, issue is if we don't fast. And also, can someone give me one good reason? Okay, if they say, you know, it's not a New Testament. Give me one good reason why the Lord fasted, you know, for 40 days. Does he need to fast? Does he need to repent? Does he need to increase the Holy Spirit? Does he need to be more obedient to the Father? Not at all. St. Paul explains very well because he was filled with the divine, holy divine, you know, the spirit. He is God in flesh. Like I just, you know, mentioned. So he did that and he did so many other things. This way he can teach us how to live as a Christian. And my last point to this, there is nothing can, or there is no person on the face of earth, you know, can make a good balance between the flesh and the spirit without fasting. Without fasting. Again, St. Paul explains that very well. Whoever doesn't fast, they are after their bellies. Bellies. And look at a lot of people. If they don't have that balance, they lose balance. Right, Doctor? Yes, Sabuna. Definitely. To lose balance. And uh, don't tell me anytime they want, they can pray. Don't tell me anytime, uh, or, 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 you know, they will be active the whole time. And don't tell me that hey, they will remain healthy. You know. And remember our our flesh, as the Lord, you know, as uh, you know, Saint Paul mentioned, who corrupt this flesh, God will corrupt him. So if we give him, give you know, this flesh, you know, the oh, whole freedom, sin, then you know, we corrupt, you know, the flesh. This is very holy temple. You are temples of the Holy Spirit. So fasting is very important. That's why, and very powerful, by the way. You know, you know uh, what the Lord said, you know, about it, uh, that this type of demons won't go out unless you fast and pray. It must be together. And our sins, as you know, who experienced the, the you know, fasting, like I said, fasting, was there for the entire life. It's not like two days a week, it's the whole life. Some of them reached out, you know, to point one day, you know, one meal a day. Some of them, they one meal every two days. Some of them, one meal every week. Why? That's why they are, they became saints. It's saints, it doesn't mean just go a few words from the Bible. Amen? Amen. Abuna, we have one last question coming in. If we have time for it, do you want to look at it? I think I sent it to you. Yeah, I sent it to you in the chat. Read it. And do you want me to read it to you? You want me to read it to you? Please. Okay. If God knows our future, why doesn't he or God judge us when we are born? I'm sorry, say it again. I can I couldn't get the last uh... if God knows our future, why doesn't he judge us when we are born? God knows our future, but don't forget as long he gives you days to live, days and years and years. He's very generous. 
and very merciful. Mm -hmm. Like I said, do not put in your mind, you know, okay, he knows my future and that's it. No. Every day you are alive, it's a chance for you to do better, to love him, to get closer, to know him, to, to, to uh, increase your, your knowledge, to become his image more and more. So it doesn't mean, okay, he knows my future, okay, why should I bother? That's it. Why you, this is a Satan, you know, thought. This is Satan thought to bring you to a point, you know, that why should I bother? Believe me, all of us, all of us, we can do and we can reach out, you know, so many, you know, things in life. Because God, he doesn't give us, you know, according to, to what we deserve. Always gives us more than we deserve. Do, we, do I deserve, you know, to come to this life, beautiful life? Do I deserve, you know, that to be his image? Do I deserve to be his son or his daughter? Do I deserve to be a temple for his Holy Spirit? Do I deserve to receive his body and blood? Like I said, you know, many times, you know, there is billions of angels they deserve, but they can receive his body and blood. So all these are, you know, there for you. Use them. Don't say, God knows my future. You decided, you, you should, you the person who deciding, you know, do you want to like go to the heaven, to heaven or not? So please do not think that way because it's not helping. And I want you to know, this is a, the last thing and very, very actually important things to keep in our mind. Each one of us, each one of us, is, it's God's concern. Each one of us are, is, you know, God's concern, which means, the, the minute you open your mouth, you want to talk to him, he is there for you. He will leave everything else, everything else in control. He will come to you. Anytime you open your heart, he is there for you. I just like, you know, mention you remember, you know, this is a good point actually of what I mentioned, you know, a few minutes ago. But even so, sometimes, you know, we may turn our face on him. We may neglect him. We may turn him down, but he never does. Why? Because you are his concern. Nothing else will keep him busy on you. Don't say there is a million and billions of people, you know. He is there for you. He can control everything else animals, human beings, the ocean, you know, everything. But the minute you open your mouth, you will say, here I am, my son or my daughter. Okay. Abuna, I think this question, uh, I didn't ask it, but I think they questioning like the predestined, uh, like I think in other religions, because we don't, I, we don't believe in predestined, right? Like we have a free will. We believe that we have a free will. Um, just like, I mean, I, I can see it in the prodigal son. So, so, okay, God knows like the end of it, but he lets him go through this, right? So the same thing, yeah, the father, he gave him everything he did, you know, he had his free will to do whatever he wishes. At the end, he came back, you know, so that's how I see it. So I don't think we predestined. As a Christian, we don't believe in that, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's a, this is very perfect, actually, you know, uh, example, the prodigal son. Uh, as long, you know, 
you wake up and come back to him. And do, don't remain in that spot if you are, you know, uh, saying, I'm not a good person. I can do better. Yes, you can. All of us can. But the main key like to, to that, like I said, we may, I, again, I mentioned that, you know, like a few minutes ago, we may go to the church. We may practice everything else, you know, in our life. But you see, I, I brought, you know, really precious point to you that his own disciples, they were with him day and night, okay? And spend more than one year, a year and a half or two, okay? And he performed so many miracles, and especially when I said, you know, the miracle of the five loaves and two fish, this is one of the tremendous, you know, uh, and a great miracle. And at that point, his own disciple haven't, you know, recognized him. Do not be that person. Go, like I said, the door still, the gate still open for you. And take the, the, this, you know, matter very seriously and take him as your Lord. And make him as the precious diamond in your life. Put him first. And this way, everything else in life, everything else, he will take care of. Amen. Are there any other questions before we wrap up? How about you, Hannah? Any questions? I'm no. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for joining us um, at this Holy Family Gathering. It's really a pleasure to be here to even be able to host. Um, typically, we meet every two weeks. And in two weeks, it brings us to November 27th already, Thanksgiving weekend. So what we'll do instead is we're going to post the first Holy Family Gathering that we had, um, which was, I believe, in... October was last month. We're going to post that for everybody to view. And then we're going to meet the following week. So the next time we see each other, God willingly live, will be on Friday, December 4th. Um, and the topic on that Friday will be from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15. If a woman forgets her infant, I will not, says the Lord. Thank you again for everybody who's here. And I pray to see you again in three weeks. Abuna. Toby. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And um, before, you know, uh, we close the uh, Holy Family Gathering, uh, the last prayer, I would like, you know, or, or I'd love to ask all of you. We have a lot of, you know, people. Uh, they are sick because of coronavirus. And uh, today we have another brother rushed to the hospital to keep him in your prayer, please, all of you. And because we are one body and we need to always care for one another because we love one another. Keep him in your prayer, please. And every sick person, not just you know from coronavirus or any other illnesses. God bless you. Let's all of us, you know, recite uh, together, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us to stay our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from the evil. For thy the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Everybody. Bye.